Hello, world. You're listening to Eleanor Wagner's Strange and Scary World here on the Paranormal UK Radio Network, where we're always creeping it real. I'm your host, Eleanor Wagner. This is episode five in the Lady Ghostbuster series. Today's guest, at the ripe old age of 27, is the youngest member of the Lady Ghostbuster team, and he's one of the few male team members. Let's give a warm welcome to John Matthews. Hey, John. Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming. It's my pleasure. Do you personally have any special gifts or talents that help you when you're paranormal investigating? Well, I'm a conduit. So a lot of times, not only can I sense that there's something there, but I can communicate with them. Okay. Oftentimes, I can also get an image of what they look like. It kind of helps me identify them. I've heard some people who get images like that in their mind take to drawing. Are you good with drawing that maybe you would be able to draw a similarity? Well, I have hand tremors in both hands, so drawing's not my strong point. Mainly, I can match them up to photos a lot. I've done that many times. Oh, okay. Even on my own, just by chance. Ah. And do you recall what your first paranormal encounter was? As a kid, I was working on a piano i'm a piano technician and had a had something brushed behind me in a very narrow hallway and i glanced up saw it out of the corner of my eye thinking it was the owner and the owner was back at her desk when i went to go ask a question on to the other side with no other way for her to get there and i looked back and there was nothing there and so what did you immediately think oh i knew it was a ghost immediately as soon as i saw it oh, okay. as soon as i knew that it wasn't there right <laughs> <laughs> and that was your very first encounter. Yeah, that was like 12 years old. I mean, I lived in a haunted house. I don't know if I if I saw something or not. I was too young to remember that. But, you know, I lived in one of the oldest houses in Sussex County. So. Mm-hmm. And do you recall how we met? We met... I want to say it was through Frankfurt Plains. Yeah, absolutely. How you and I connected on a paranormal level, though, I I can't recollect. (laughs) I think it was through one of your books. It might have been when you were putting together Haunted Sussex County. You you know what? You posted to one one of the pages and you were asking for paranormal experiences and I responded to you. That's how we connect. Ah, Okay. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, and we've been together ever since you've come on investigations with the Lady Ghostbuster team quite often. And I really value your input when you do come because of your sensitivity. I really find it helpful in getting to the root of something that may be in the house or building that we're working in. Do you even remember what our first investigation together was? It was the piano shop. Ah, okay. Let's tell the listening audience about the piano shop. Okay, so I'm a piano technician and I work at this piano store store outside of Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is heavily haunted. I had seen stuff in the past and I invited Eleanor here and her crew out to investigate. And that's how I got connected with the group, really. And we want to get back out there again one of these days. Absolutely. We have an opportunity because the, it, the paranormal activity has not ceased. It actually continues, you say. No. And one of my one of the newest employees actually saw a figure in the same area. I saw my first one there in the big ah. room. Though. Yeah. He told told me about it he saw somebody standing in in one of the in one of the areas sort of hiding behind where that mannequin used to be oh okay did this person know that it was haunted or just say oh my god have you seen anything strange or i think he had heard inklings but when it came time to actually see something he was kind of freaked out right probably he was probably one of those believer disbelievers until it actually happens to them exactly And I was in the same room standing right next to him and didn't see it. From so. that investigation that night, we had some pretty strange things happen. Yep. I had my first EVP, or uh, first K2 hits, where it was actually intellectual, where where I would tell it to light it up, and it would light up, and tell it to go away, and it would go away. Um, there were mysterious bangs that happened that I caught on video. I got various faces in, in pictures, if you remember. I sent some yeah. to you. One of the team members actually got the broken garage door open <laughs> and slammed shut in the middle of the night. That thing baffles me because I'm afraid of that door because it is so heavy. If you lose control of it, it's coming down, and if your toe's under it, it'll cut your toe off. That door is so heavy, it takes all of my, really all of my body weight to pull the chain to get it up 
and there's no way for me to just grab that door and lift it. So that really, seeing the video, even if there was somebody outside of that door, there's no way that that could have done, that they could have lifted it. It's impossible. Incidentally, for the listening audience, there was snow on the ground on the outside, and when the team went outside to see if there were any footprints on the outside of the garage, there were none. So there's no explanation as to why that door lifted. Absolutely not. It shot down as it did. And nothing like that has happened since. It must have been the. It must have been all that energy that we produced from being yep. there that night. Now you say conduit. Define conduit, please. Well, a conduit. My perception is, and what happens to me is that the the spirits can sort of communicate whether it's an image or a voice. It's sort of like having a, a different voice in your head every every time you meet a new entity. So they actually communicate through me through my mind and it's almost like the voice in my head but it's not and i can actually tell the difference it's kind of kind of bizarre but it's cool which brings me to my next point to tell the listening audience when maria when we were at the piano shop you were a conduit for whoever it was that owned each of those pianos in that place and john would go to the piano and he would sit down now you would say that you're an average piano player you say you're an imperfect you say you you have errors and you're playing every now and again when you sat down at a piano and just started playing impeccably without error songs or music you've never heard or knew before right it was amazing and beyond that to the listening audience his whole face and demeanor changed he looked like this totally different person when and he was channeling whoever it was that really was playing the piano. Yeah. I actually had an incident with that the other night. I had stayed over the piano shop. Three o'clock in the morning, I go into the big room. Dave was going to get a shower after we were done watching a movie. It was right around Halloween, too, which made it kind of interesting. And we just finished a horror film. And I sat down, and I'm not a classical player, first off. But I sat down, and I'll send you the recording so you can forward it or whatever. But I sat down, and I wrote this really spooky classical piece and played it flawlessly the first time. Dave thought that a ghost was playing the piano. He didn't think it was me because it wasn't my style at all. Right, right. So it continues to happen. It's kind of cool. It is very cool. Well, I was fascinated that night when we experienced it, and I do have the videos myself, but I would love to see that most recent one. And even, even Cassidy caught the orbs. Yeah. Yes. In front of That's me right. during that. Yep. That's right. I forgot about that. Cassidy is my daughter, if the listening audience doesn't recall, and she was with us that night for that investigation. Do you like to use paranormal equipment? I know you said K2, but I can't remember if you use anything else. I use a K2 a lot. I actually am going to be buying a voice recorder just for the sake of having one, but I use my cell phone for a lot of stuff, and I've had really good luck catching orbs and catching pictures. And as you know, we've, we've caught some of the same stuff. On, on our phones identically that one cemetery we were at in Montague it worked out mm-hmm. quite well where, where multiple investigators caught the same figures even if it wasn't clear that kind of substantiated it for us so that was really well, because cool. it, w- it would be one of us coming up and saying hey I see a so and so and then you going oh my gosh I did too I and caught then, that yeah and then somebody else coming up saying exactly the same thing without having overheard our conversation right and that's the same thing the way you investigate and this is what I love is somebody will go into a room and sense that there's somebody standing there and all they'll say to the next investigators walk in there tell me what you see or what you get and when it matches up it's like yes that's when you know it's true i agree i do agree well you were saying you were thinking about getting a voice recorder i would definitely suggest getting those ones that you can immediately play back and listen to because we've found of late some of our team members have that particular type and it was unbelievable to hear the stuff right after yeah and we'd be jumping up now and going oh, i got something and the k2s would go crazy because for some reason the ghosts just love when you're happy and you're laughing and joking and <laughs> it makes them feel at ease for one thing yeah yeah and they thrive on that energy i think yep what's the most real proof you yourself have uncovered so far like have you ever had what you would call a real paranormal encounter a couple times i've almost come face to face but definitely for me, my best piece is the picture of Charles Pierce. Oh, that was great. For the listening audience, probably about a year and a half ago, would you say it was? It was before COVID, so at okay. least two years. Yeah. We went to the Columns Museum in Milford, Pennsylvania. 
and we had our run of the entire mansion. So this is four floors of this huge, enormous museum slash mansion. And you said Charles was his name, right? And Earth. he was the proprietor of all of the stuff that was inside the building. He owned the mansion that was up 209 from there. He and okay. Julia. And, all and of the a lot of their stuff do- is, in, is in the Collins Museum now. Okay. And we saw photographs of Charles when he was young, but we also saw photographs of him in old age and on his deathbed. Right. Which John I didn't pay attention photos. to when I was there, by the way. I didn't pay no. attention to photos. Right. I did. And then when you showed me that, I'm going, holy shit, I think that's him. And we went and we looked at the picture in the bedroom and compared it to your photograph of mm-hmm. what you found in that kitchen area. And sure as shit, it was identical to the picture. And then that was why we were so excited, because it, for me, that was confirmation that that's who it was that was there. There, t- there was no denying that's who it was. Yeah. And the other cool thing was, for me, not only did I capture it in one picture, but I got like five different pictures where there was nothing there, and then he slowly moved into the frame, and then he was, on the last one, he was full form, totally developed, you know, no pixelation or anything you could tell he was standing there. He blocked out that street lamp, too, remember? And you could see, as he moved in, then the street lamp disappeared. Yes. And I know that we also had some contact of some sort because of the Lincoln flag, because they have a, a flag on right. display in the museum that from has the, Lincoln's blood on it. From the fourth the theater. From, right. The night that he was assassinated. Yeah. And I know some stuff happened with that as well. We had a really large group that night. It was yeah. probably, I think, 13, 13 of us, I want to say. But I broke us up into separate groups so that each group would take a floor at a time and we weren't on top of one another. And sometimes you get a little worried when when you have such a large group because you don't know how people are going to interact or get in each other's way. But we seem to really have a good rapport with one another and we managed to do a good job of it and never step on each other's toes. And that was by far my favorite investigation so far. Really? Yeah. yeah. At one point, we found ourselves everybody down in the basement. Something had arisen with Art Peterson and yep. I think it might have been Laurel, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I don't really recall who it was, but they started having some major like interaction and just everybody came and we surrounded and we all listened in and it was pretty amazing. I was really impressed with that. Incidentally, in the new year, probably January or February, we will be doing an investigation at the historical mansion in Lake Well and Paw Pack. I think really? It's the Wills Mansion. So I will let you know. Yeah, they definitely. I reached out to the Historical Society and they were very excited about it. And obviously, weather permitting, because where we live in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, we get snow. And when we <laughs> get snow, we get snowed in. So I'm hoping that it will work out. But if not, I know it's one of those reschedules that'll happen. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. What scares you the most about ghost hunting? Some of the stuff I've seen, like demonic entities, stuff that I could tell is not something you want to be messing with like that one child that i found in the one house i was just gonna say out of all the investigations we've done together so far that's probably your least favorite because i could still sense your uh, nervousness you were definitely nervous you were from the moment i saw it i walked out and this is kind of weird it was a if you ever see a horror film where there's an entity that's really scary sometimes it'll glitch where where say you'll see for a split second here then it'll be here and then it'll be here and it sort of it sort of freezes it doesn't move smooth it glitches is the best way i can describe it and this was a child and it was all gray and black a child, non-child, because if right. I remember, you said this entity it, was never human. It, it looked was just like a child. Portraying, it was portraying itself as a child, but in life, it never was. And there human. was blood everywhere on the floor around it. And it was in this random couple's house. It was an old Victorian mm-hmm. in Sussex, and there was a, an actual ghost in the building, an elderly man who was trying to talk to us. I don't know what, what? he was trying to say to us. And I saw him this, from the beginning. Right, but this evil entity child thing would not let him speak yeah and that was one and i even talked to another one of our investigators privately about you know how to how to handle something like that that's one of my fears is bringing something home like that 
Thank goodness it didn't follow me. I do know that if you take means to protect yourself, you can be safe. Like I use protective oil. I have this Kinsey charm that I wear. I have quartz, my quartz bracelet that I wear faithfully. If you do stuff like that to protect yourself, you're not going to bring anything home. And that's aside from you saying you're not allowed to leave and come home with me, which is something that we do at the end of every investigation. You may not come home with us. I do remember walking into that house though and thinking, because I'm one of those people that loves history, loves historical homes, especially the old Victorian colonials. And I was excited to go into that house. And I remember walking into it and going, ooh, I don't like it here. Ooh, that like it. and the Phillipsburg investigation was the other one. That was Ah, that's the one where you almost got thrown down the stairs. That's the one where I would, if you, if I would sit limp, I would be pushed back towards the staircase. Yep. Right, right. Well, for the listening audience, I knew all of the facts about that investigation because I'm the one who writes the chapters after I speak to the people in an interview. So I knew what had been going on with the homeowners in that particular investigation. But when our team members show up, I don't tell them that information. I'm the only one that's privy to it because I really do want to see if they pick up on things themselves that will collaborate what the homeowner or business owner has already told me. So when John came into that investigation, I already knew that the woman of the home had said that there were incidences that she was almost pushed down the stairs. And then the other medium that was there that night had said, she also saw somebody beating someone downstairs in the basement, which was collaborated by the homeowner when she said her grandson was told by a mean man that he could not go downstairs in the basement because if he did, he would beat him up. So when you said that you were being pushed towards the stairs, it kind of freaked me out. And I do remember telling the homeowner. Right from the beginning, I had to pull myself up the stairs. Do you remember that? I couldn't even walk up the steps. I had to pull myself by the banister. Right. They didn't, whoever it was didn't want you upstairs in right. that area. Exactly. I think it was that main center hallway. Yes. Area. And that was a small, tight house to begin with, too. Not enough, not a lot of room for things to hide in it. Right. If there was a person in that house, chances are you'd run into them real quick. Right. And I'm talking a living person at that. Yeah. So. I don't know if I told you about what had happened after the fact. If I, when I followed up, I don't know if I filled you in on what happened, but the woman, no. we recommended to the woman because now she had moved out of the home and she was fixing it up to rent it out. And that right. following right. weekend, a young couple was moving in with their five-year-old child and she was really concerned about that. So we recommended she get a house cleanse. So I connected her with Jackie Hangley, our team member, who does house cleanings and she did do a cleanse of the home and then she (laughs) locked it so that whatever it was could not get back in and I thought about it after the fact because that area is pretty heavy paranormal activity wise and I thought to myself oh my goodness I wonder if any of the other houses in the area would have any activity after she locked it up that they went into another house oh I hear your cat spot before I got my big grand piano in the back bedroom she growled at something that wasn't there in the middle of the night. Just stood up and uh-huh. on her haunches and growled. So she's definitely my protector. But she definitely anyway. lets you know if something's around. Yep. So you said when you first had your grand piano, she growled at something in the corner? Oh, it was before I got it when my bedroom was still the, the master. I gave it up for the piano. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in relation to that Phillipsburg house recently, now Warren County Hauntings was just released, what, three or four weeks ago. And so now people are getting wind that it's out there. And I receive emails from readers. And one of them said, oh, my goodness, when I was reading your book, I was shocked to find out about that home in Phillipsburg. He said, our experiences in that home are identical and then some. Wow. So this this gentleman and his wife are going to give me their account of what happened to them in that home. That's great. Pretty cool. I love when I hear that stuff. Something else is coming out in Sussex 3 that's similar. There was, I get stories from people in the most oddest of places. I was out with Cassidy. We were getting pedicures and we're sitting there and we're catching up because that's like mommy and me time. Yeah, mom, what's going on? What was your last investigation? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. And the nail technician is, you know, all ears perked listening. And she goes, oh, you do that stuff? And I'm like, 
yeah, I'm the one that wrote the Sussex County Haunting series. Oh, that's you? Yeah. Wow, do I have a story for you? <laughs> so she starts to tell me about this place that her and her boyfriend lived in. And what a crazy ass story she tells me. So I'm like, hmm, I'm going to go and stop at this house and knock on the door and, and give them my card and ask them if they want to share any stories with me. Well, when I got there, the house was for sale. <laughs> Nobody was in it. I'm like, oh, but I put it on social media and I said, if anybody has any accounts about this location, get back to me. And this guy reaches out to me and he says, oh my God, that place is freaking crazy haunted. He said, what happened to me and my girlfriend? Now I thought that it might be her boyfriend and she didn't tell him that she already told me. Turns out it was a totally different guy and a totally different girl that lived wow. there. And they had the same, same shit happen to them. And like I said, then some, it was even worse. So I love it when stuff like that pans out and ends up being full circle <laughs> with other people. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Paranormal investigating has progressed so much over the last 10 years. I can't imagine where it's going to go in the years ahead. You know what I mean? I mean, when you look at the technology already, I mean, 10 years ago, we didn't have cell phones. I, and the fact that you could sit there with the cell phone and get orbs and, and full body apparitions and like Charles Pierce, that was their purse that was taken with a cell phone. You know, I can't imagine because they keep getting cameras better and better. You know, maybe eventually all your tools are going to end up on your phone. You know, I know people argue it, argue as to the validity of using your phone and not using your phone. I feel using your phone's camera is absolutely definitive proof. Yeah. I'm not so keen on yeah. using, I'm not so keen on using those apps that you have. They have a couple of different apps that you can use for investigations. And I don't know how trustworthy they are as far as picking up vocals and that sort of thing because yeah. of the radio waves that could interfere with the with well, phones. I also, when I investigate, my phone's off. Uh, I mean, it's on airplane mode, so there are no extra things coming in or out. That's very important to me to not set off the K2s in the room, stuff like that. Right. Well, that's smart. That's that's a smart way of doing it. Yeah. What do you find to be the hardest part about being a paranormal investigator? Well, for me, being a church musician, is it's almost like living a double life, trying to keep my church family and my investigating family separate. It's kind of not letting them intertwine, not letting one know about, the, well, obviously you guys know about the church, but not letting the church know about my investigating because it wouldn't look, be looked too highly upon. That's really sad. I used to think about that, John. I used to think about what people were going to think of me, but I mean, I'm a Christian and yep. Jesus is my Lord yep. and Savior, but I do believe that reincarnation is possible and I do believe that ghosts exist. And it's debatable and controversial, but some people say there are things in the Bible that point to the existence of both these things. And if yep. people in yep. the church can't accept that about me, well, sorry. You know, that's how, that's the point that I've reached in my life already. That's where I'm at. But you're still young yet, so you've got time and you're like, you were in the well, church, so I can get It's get not it. even that. It's the fact that it's a job for me. As much as I am a Christian, the church is a job and I don't want my boss getting wind of it and getting funny ideas. It's more what it exactly. is. Exactly. I hear you. You want your job protection. I totally get it. Yep. But that's what I meant by like how, you know, that you have your specific reasons for doing it. And one day you might reach a point where it's just not going to matter to you anymore. So, yeah. But are you skeptical of some of these other groups? that are out there and, and the proof that they unearth, even how they behave when they're on screen. Well, watching like, say, Ghost Adventures, you mentioned how they behave. I don't believe in getting all overly excited because you lose out on so much. Say, if they hear something and they, they get totally, they start flipping out and, and screaming and yelling, and I get that totally because I've been there and totally freaked out the first time my, my K2 meter started really going off with intelligent responses, but I feel like sitting back and letting the ghosts connect, but at the same time, I think it's important to listen to what they have to say, and sure. I feel like you'll find a lot more that way. Are you skeptical of some of the proof that they honor? You always have to look at things with an eye of skepticism. Like, we were when we were in the Walpack Cemetery, and even within our group, we thought we had caught a picture of a little girl standing over a grave. And I went back through my photos and pointed out certain key facts 
and found out that it, there was a yellow bucket in that exact location, and it ended up being that bucket. Yeah, debunk it before you actually agree that it's factual proof. Remember how disappointed yeah. everybody was on that one? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think we got something after that in the trees, though, that made up for it. Remember, yep. you were taking yep. some, yeah. Oh, a bunch <laughs> so. of stuff. Uh, that so was, that really was a that cool night. Yeah, that, everything that we've done has been really fun and exciting. I really have enjoyed it. Yeah. If you could investigate your dream haunted spot, though, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. Probably my childhood house. Oh, really? That What's it called again? The, the Westbrook Bell. Yeah. I drove by there one time, probably about two years ago, and just started taking random pictures to the window. And I definitely got something in the window. I think well, I shared the, the photos with you. The windows on that are wavy, too. You can't really trust it's the really that's original glass oh okay so you really got to be not really careful I, but i'm pretty sure i sent the pictures to you though I, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that i i sent them to you and we thought that it that it was something it was in the middle of the day so it wasn't well, like it was nighttime well actually i made a friend through the national park now that house is alarmed now mm -hmm. there's alarms if you open window or the right windows or doors it'll go off but I'm actually going to get to go in and see the house again at some point because I made a friend through the National Park who's going to allow, allow me to go in. And that's one thing. Supposedly, there's a woman in white, and I remembered her. I don't know if I heard about it as a kid or if I actually saw her. Right. But I, I would love to just take the time and just see what I can find out. I'll, I'll be sure to let you know. Thank you. <laughs> Because when I drove by, I was like, oh, I would love to get in there. The barns were open, but the house itself obviously wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of thing, even when the barns are open, you really don't want to go in without somebody escorting you because they don't look too highly upon that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell me about some of the exciting things that have happened to you on some of the in investigations you've had on your own? Because I know you've gone and done some things on your own. Well, absolutely. The craziest one was when I was pulling a pipe organ out of the church in Scranton. That one was was a situation where a Catholic church had closed literally that day and I had until like 1 a.m. in the morning to get the rest of the facade of the pipe organ out. Actually, some of the pipes are right there behind that lamp. In your apartment. Mm -hmm. Yep, which this is an active pipe organ. I built it out of like seven different instruments. John has a barn or a storage center or something filled have, with pianos, organs, and trains, right? Yeah, I have four storage units with pipe organs and pianos alone. So, Are you going to open up your own museum of some sort someday? Well, or? that's the plan. I study piano design and I keep anything that I find interesting piano-wise. So, different piano designs and like i have a ship's piano where the keyboard folds up into the case and stuff like that but yeah well i remember i, I remember you actually i got the original photograph from you of the broken down piano in the old senior home the pines in in the pines in yeah i got that photograph from you no a friend of mine took that photo did they uh, yeah i wouldn't have I, had that photograph if you didn't send it to me that was very cool if, I, yeah i know it's in our photos and now i know where to get it because his uh, yeah. face got deleted. <laughs> I used that photo in my Sussex County Hauntings book when I wrote the chapter on the Pines Inn. <laughs> so I'm sorry, you were saying about that you pull in this out of that church. What happened? Well, that night, the first thing that both the guy that was with me and I heard was somebody say hello from downstairs. Now, I was expecting a friend of mine who didn't come for like two hours after that. And then I started to really pay attention. And being that I'm a conduit, what it was was all the priests that ever served at that church that were no longer with us had actually made an appearance that night and it was to the point where there was because the church had just closed there were photos of every single one in order laid out on a table and i could actually point to which priest it was oh wow that's cool that was yeah, that was, was talking it, through you it was bizarre wow. the founding priest tried to throw me off the balcony that night oh i think i remember you telling <laughs> me about that the guy who i was pulling the organ out for was downstairs by the altar area i was in the balcony and he literally i never saw him he saw him fly up over the balcony rail run at me lunge at me pushing with his hands out and i felt something i i remember distinctly feeling like i was going to go over the edge and i stepped back and apparently he flew down and flew right through him and disappeared what is was it with 
these ghosts that want to push you down balconies and stairs, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's do only happened any, twice. Do you have any idea why he would have wanted to push you over the side? Well, for one thing, I was somebody who didn't belong. I was somebody who wasn't with the church, with that church in particular. I mean, Matt was on staff, the guy that I was with. I was somebody who was dismantling the church, taking things that should have stayed if it was to be opened. Number two, he was upset by the church being closed that night. It was being shut down for good. Yeah, they literally did have the last mass that day and tied a ceremonial ribbon on the door. And it was the last time that that church was ever a Catholic church. So is it going to be like a museum or historical building from that point on? Or is it going to be taken down or what? We don't know. The building's pretty much gutted. All the Catholic items are gone. The stained glass is gone. The interior's pretty much gutted. That the town had taken over the building and we don't know what's happening with it at this point. But we, I do know that the foundation, it was sliding off of its foundation, basically, due to years mm. of neglect. Oh, that's sad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Out of any of our team members, you and the only other person I thought anything like that has ever happened was Tara. Tara Fans. Really? Not, it was probably, I want to say, maybe a month or so ago. She calls me and she said she had the, the freakiest thing happen to her. Where she was behind the wheel of her car and she actually felt something try and make her turn her wheel off the bridge. Wow. And it flipped around because she had to do everything but control herself to hold onto the wheel. And she says, I may be depressed, she said lately. She said, but I'm certainly not suicidal. Yeah. She said it was the weirdest thing that it happened. And she says she's actually hesitant now when she goes over the bridge that whatever it was was trying to make her drive off the bridge. That's crazy. Nuts for sure. That's one of my fears. If you've ever watched The Haunting of Hill House, there's the one scene where they're driving and the ghost of their mom, I think it was, comes up between them and and screams Mm -hmm. and scares and they go off the road. That's one of my fears. Yeah. So yeah, it makes you wonder whatever possesses them to mm-hmm. how to react that way. Are they so desperate for your attention, or are they angry about something? I don't know, but that is pretty scary. Well, after all, that was Hollywood cinema. But well, you know, Tara's experience and your experiences aren't far off. Yeah. Well, I was there to do a job. I wasn't there to investigate. That was just yeah. by chance. I happened to tap into it. Right. As a conduit, I find it very. It's a very bad idea to go to a cemetery at 2 o'clock in the morning for (laughs) any reason. Um, Because I met a gentleman the one night that looked like Willie Nelson, almost. And I say that because I got an image of what he looked like. And basically... stood behind me over me and said you're not supposed to be here and at that point it was, so, uh, I, I didn't respond to it I said to my friend John who was changing his cameras get your picture time to go it turns out that he was sensitive too and and said yeah I know he's there <laughs> And we got talking that night, but we were there just to get photos of a certain bridge that was over the town, and it was... Right, I, I remember you saying... I and feel that he was protecting the cemetery, that I wasn't... I had no business there. I had no real reason to be there, and... Any particular reason why you chose not to answer him? Well, in a way, I did, because I basically said, get your picture, time to go. You know, at that point, it's... He literally backed off at that point, because he knew that I was following what he was saying or signal right, right yeah which that had to what? be a protector spirit of that cemetery is what i'm guessing mm. and that's one of what two you... times i've seen a protector spirit what do protector spirits have to do they just roam a cemetery usually at night and basically protect the cemetery they make sure that the people that aren't supposed to be there aren't there they make sure that nothing bad happens to the cemetery okay the other one that i found was out in regalsville new jersey along the old canal it's up up the hill from it it's an old like 1720s cemetery it was from the first settlers in the u.s literally and we were approaching it and there was a quarry up where literally the sides of the mountain came up and there was a clearing above that and we saw somebody walk away from it and when we got up to it there was nobody up there and that wall when you get up there is the edge of the cemetery and there was nobody what there that, what did that somebody look like we just saw a black figure it was uh. three for three of us total that went up there and i didn't sense anything i didn't feel anything didn't see anything up there so but there's there's a known spirit that 
that is in that cemetery. It's been seen before. So Any specifics about the spirit that's been seen or just that dark shadow? Well, it's hard to describe it. It has feathers, whatever it is. So it might be something Native American. I was going to say feathers, maybe Native American. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard anything about the Leighton Inn that we're going to be investigating in December? I heard inklings that, that it was haunted. I never dug into it. You know, I never asked anybody or anything. I kind of just, oh, okay. The bartender slash owner has a number of accounts that he's going to share with me. And he's the one that's given us permission to go in and do the investigation. But I've known that it was haunted and I felt like it was when I was there. Are we going to get access to upstairs too? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So what we have to obviously wait until the bar closes though to do that part because, and that's why it's going to be on a weeknight as opposed to a weekend night because they're open late on the weekend night. So I had to try and take what we can get, but I'm excited <laughs> nonetheless to get in there. What question do people ask you the most when they discover that you're a paranormal investigator? I get a lot of times, oh, that's really cool. I've always wanted to do that, you know, or something like that. I, I haven't really gotten many questions except, have you caught any pictures? And I show them the Charles Pierce photo. Right. The interesting thing about that photo is nobody knew that he was there before mm -hmm. that. It was always Juliet that it was seen and heard from and photographed and stuff like that. And didn't somebody that night get a photo of her? I believe so, yeah. I wish I had seen I can't that. Who it was. You have to dig that up at some point because I've I would love to see that being that I caught him. Yes. Well, right now I'm working on Sussex County Hauntings 3, so I'll start pulling stuff out of the folder for that, and I'll be working on Pike County in the spring. Sweet. So I'll be going through all I'll be going through all of that. I'll, I'll even end up doing the piano shop for the Pennsylvania edition, because it's in Pennsylvania anyway, and I have um, that story, because it's very into story, the piano shop. Are you going to put that photo in there? Of yours? Yeah, you should. If you give me permission to do so, yeah. Absolutely. If you, if you, cool. Absolutely. If you let me, I would love to, yeah. Why not? Because that's that's something and, that, and, that people can relate to. Well, I would definitely put the comparison picture of him on his deathbed because you can see who it is from, mm -hmm. from yeah. that picture. You, there's no doubt who was in that picture of yours. You know what I mean? With, that was the crazy thing. Not only to get a photo, but to know who it was right off the bat. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think it dawned on you until I had said to you, oh, my God, I think that that's him. I, and you were like, what? And I showed you the picture of him in, on his deathbed and you were like, oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I didn't know about them until after because right. I came in late. I didn't know right. their history or anything. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I tend to not do research until after. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah that's good. You yeah, know, that was a fun investigation. We were on the ghost tour for the listening audience. They have a ghost tour in Milford, Pennsylvania around Halloween every year. I think it starts just prior to Halloween and then goes to the first weekend in November, I believe. Right. Because it starts right. to get really cold. And we happen to be on that tour with the gentleman who is on the historical board, I guess, for the Collins Museum. And I just happened to ask, is there any way? <laughs> and as soon as he said yes, I'm like, oh, I got to jump on it because I don't like to leave it for too long because people change their minds. <laughs> so as soon as he said, yeah, I was booking it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. You know, where, in your opinion, is the most haunted place in America? I have to say Gettysburg. Really? And I haven't even really spent a lot of time. I was literally in Gettysburg just enough to photograph two trains. <laughs> <laughs> but you sense the spirit activity? Oh, yeah. It's I was took one of my shots from the battlefield with some of the monuments on it. You know, right where that cut is, where the railroad runs right under the bridge there. If you've mm -hmm. ever been there, it, it's pretty yes. apparent. And you could just sense it. A lot of the activity in Gettysburg is residual. Absolutely. Be because of the tragic way those people died, they just relive it over and over and over again. So it's residual stuff. It's yep. not something that you could actually interact with. Although I, I'm sure there are plenty that you can, but yep. the majority of the activity there is a replay of everything that just unfolded exactly. in the area. I know that a lot of people do say that it's now become so bombarded with people going there to see and well the history part of it because people do want to see where it took place and learn the history and then you have the paranormal enthusiasts that want to go there to see what they can find that way and it's become so overridden with 
a population of people that sometimes you can't get anything to happen, but I just don't know how true that is. Well, I know that two things I've heard. I've heard EVPs with actual cannon shots and people yelling back and forth and, and stuff like that. And then there was a friend of mine who wasn't a believer in the paranormal at the time, was involved in a reenactment. And I believe he was with the Union Army and the guys started reporting that there was this Confederate that would walk through and walk through the camps area of the Union Army for the for the reenactment and he's walking down a path by himself and sure enough head on comes this confederate soldier only he realized he didn't hear any footsteps and it walked it was right a full, past him full bodied apparition yeah full body absolutely wow and that was as a non-believer he caught that he saw it and then what happened what happened after that when he it, came it walked past him and he turned around and it was gone and so now he relays this information to you guys and obviously he's a believer now right yeah he only had one other experience of an abandoned schoolhouse or something of of something in the doorway i couldn't can't remember exactly what it's the gettysburg story that stuck with me yeah i definitely want to spend some time there especially even just at night even at dusk just to walk around the battlefields we talked about going there for like an overnighter right spending a night in one of the places on off season that's something that we were talking about doing i think we should go there well that's what i meant by off season yeah because you can you can actually get homes that are unoccupied and you'll be the only people in there Mm -hmm. at the time so i'm definitely game for that yeah definitely i know that a lot of people are getting involved in paranormal investigating and sometimes i get a little nervous about that because i feel like people jump into things without really thinking about what they're doing and they're unprepared and they take unnecessary risks that can be harmful do you agree absolutely there's obviously first of all trying to follow steps to get a, a spirit to appear like the Atco ghost in Atco, New Jersey, which is appears by a factory. Going out specifically looking for certain things where you have to do certain things for it to appear. Anything like that, or if you're unprepared, you can go out and come back with something that you didn't expect to leave with. Or you can ex- experience something that's not a ghost that might be demonic or something like that. It's very it's very real. You have to be incredibly careful. I think the first thing that people go for that are really uneducated about the paranormal world is that Ouija board. Yeah. They think, oh, that's something that and that's probably the worst thing. Absolutely. To do. That that was used in our family farmhouse and my aunt reported seeing a great goat head appear from it Ooh. From down the hallway and she Who used out, the ouija board in your farmhouse oh uh, my aunt and my sister oh boy and she started reading out of the bible and it disappeared so yeah it's definitely freaking out <laughs> yeah it's definitely something i've never touched one uh, there was one in my house when when my roommate lived here and i was so mad that he got rid of it within a day <laughs> So, really? Yeah. Why did he have that? He knows better know. than that. Oh, my goodness. Sheesh. Did you guys ever make it up to the uh, Boy Scout camp again? I haven't. They were. And they said that it was that there was nothing going on. Uh, because yeah. that first time that we went there, we definitely had some oh, there stuff was, happen. There was a ton of stuff. We even got photos that night. Yeah. Something growled at some of the women that were. They thought it was a bear. And then when we played back the audio, it was definitely not. A bear. Yeah. And when they got it analyzed by professionals that they knew also, it really freaked them out as well. So it's kind of like, I don't know what the heck that was all about. Yeah, that was definitely a weird experience. And my image of the barn, too, there was was weird because there is no barn on the premises, if you remember that. Yeah. Tell the listening audience about that. I got a, a picture of somebody literally kicking somebody out of a loft with a noose, like out of a second story. It was bizarre. I've never caught something like that. You know, every once in a while, I'll get a glimpse of something that might have happened. Like the Phillipsburg house, for a split second in the bathroom, I saw somebody struggling in the water in the bathtub, although the mm-hmm. the tub was empty at the time and there was right. nobody in it. But that one definitely freaked me out because I literally saw the foot go against them and them kicked out the door. Mm. Yeah. I wonder what that was all about. Who knows? There's no barn there. Never right. was. That, well, that you know of. Yeah. We don't know the before the before. And the other 
other thing with that camp is it's just so huge. There's areas that you can't get to at night, like like over by the by the other side of the lake. There's cabins back there that I don't go at night. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't. It, it literally takes a golf cart to get around to some of those places. Right. Or a quad or something like that. Yeah. Right. It'd be interesting to see if anything else is going on over there, like later on next year. Yeah. I think there's so, always something going on. The other thing you got to realize is that's not far from Clinton Road and, sh- and uh, Split Rock and places like that. And a lot of the activity between those roads kind of converges. There's a what's definitely the thing, connection. What's the thing about Split Rock? I don't think I've heard anything about that. It's There's a woman in white that appears on it. There's various lights and stuff like that. So a lot of similarities with Clinton Road. The coin thing where you throw a coin on, oh, on okay. Batman's curve mm-hmm. and it comes back to you. Yeah, that's on Clinton Road. Yeah. Yeah. Which the only thing I've ever seen on Clinton Road was the Chevelle. The ghost, the ghost Chevelle. Where you come mm-hmm. across it... And and you see the headlights in the distance. And no matter how fast you go, it loses you. And it's gone by the first corner. Well, the story goes that she hit a boulder that's no longer there and died on site. Mm-hmm. They've taken out that whole that whole Dead Man's Curve. They've straightened it out. So that's before Dead Man's Curve, right. actually. Yeah. Oh, it is? Uh, yeah, that happens on the first stretch before you hit the major curve by the reservoirs before Dead Man's Curve. Oh, I see. It, where, where the road does this, and then it goes down along the reservoirs and turns back that's dead man's curve this is the first one and i've i've had that happen to me i think i did about 50 miles an hour through dead man's curve before they straightened it trying to catch whatever it was and i never caught up with it Mm -hmm. it was gone well, there have always been sightings of strange lights going on over there, too. A yeah. strange phenomena in that area. Although yeah. I have to tell you, the ghost truck was real. Yes, yes. I know, you told me that. <laughs> yeah, you told me that. <laughs> there was a guy with a, with a truck that was lifted so high that he could literally go over fallen uh-huh. trees and stuff like that. Right. So. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. For the longest time, people thought that truck was a ghost truck, but it really wasn't. <laughs> oh, it makes me so mad when people try to, like... <laughs> Do stuff like that, and then they ruin the reality of what goes on over there with their... It became a legend, though. Well, that's true. That's true. It did. (laughs) Well, John, this was really fun. Thank you so much for sharing. My pleasure. uh, It's great to be here. Yeah, it was was fun listening to what you've been through. I know that recently you've added to your career by taking on a position with a John Denver tribute band. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so it's pretty much I'm the second keyboardist for Chris Collins and the Boulder Canyon Band. They're based out of Antonio, Colorado, which is cool. I can't wait to get there. And so far I've had two gigs and I have a third one coming up. It's a John Denver Christmas. So just okay, getting the nice. swing of things, you know, it's really exciting. I'm sure. And you enjoyed those first two, huh? Yeah. Especially the first one. It was one of my dreams to play my own piano on stage. And we made it happen all the way in Connecticut, no less. <laughs> oh, how exciting. Yeah. So now you'll get to do a John Denver Christmas in Easton, Pennsylvania. We're very excited to have a celebrity in our Lady <laughs> Ghostbuster team. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. All right, John, you keep me posted about what's going on, and I'll see you at the Leighton Inn for our investigation. Sounds good. I'm excited about that. And thank you again. You have a good night. You too. Bye. To you, my ghostly listeners, you can follow me on my website, authoreleanorwagner.com, where there are links to my books and video updates and photographs from all of my investigations. Thank you, paranormal enthusiasts, for tuning in today. I hope you'll come back again. Remember to tap into your own gifts. Everyone has them. And in the meantime, make sure you're creeping it real.